in this video, I'm gonna reveal 10 tips for you how you can improve your green screen footage. Because recently I realized how powerful green screen actually is. With my little knowledge about 3D animation, I could create very, very cool scene on a small budget. I literally did this in my garage with like a very cheap green screen and I use Blender, which is a free software. So all I had to do is learn how to do it. And now that I did, I want to share this newly acquired knowledge to you. Stop you phonies, how's it going? Welcome to another video. And yes, I'm very excited about today's video because I'm gonna share very simple things to you which you can use for your own videos. And please like the video so you can help other creators find this video because I think this is gonna be very helpful and watch until the end because my last two tips are the most important ones. But let's begin. My tip number one, don't be intimidated. A green screen doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need fancy lighting. You can do all of that in your house, in your garage, in your bedroom, wherever you have a little space, you can set up a green screen, a little light and make it happen. I just researched what there is available on Amazon and you can get a green screen like this for 20 bucks or less. And I also like to have a little portable green screen, which is a little pricier. But the cool thing about that is it's very easy to fold and unfold and you can bring it to set. You can use it wherever you want. And I always like to use those two and those are around 80 bucks or less. But when you get one, make sure you are going to be able to unfold it that way that you can actually also stand on your green screen. That way you can get full body shots, which are amazing, not always needed but it's great to have the possibility. And if you totally can't afford a green screen, which is totally fine, you can also use the blue sky. If you're in a country where it's always warm and you can rely that you know the sky is gonna be blue, you can also use the sky as a blue screen. It does work. Just try it out. Okay, and the next tip is very important. You need really good green screen footage. What does it mean, good for green screen footage? So what you need is to be able to separate yourself from the green screen as good as possible. There's two things you can do for that. The first thing is a technical point. You need a very high bitrate in your camera. You need a lot of quality, you need resolution. So the better the camera, the easier it's gonna be. Yes, you can shoot this footage also on your iPhone. It does work, I use it all the time, like in this helicopter shot. My the controller, it was actually a green screen, or the wand was also actually a green screen, shot on the iPhone. It's totally fine for YouTube videos, for TikTok videos, Facebook videos. For that, it's totally fine. But, you know, if you want your footage to be on the big screen, on TVs, then it's better to use better cameras if possible. But what is more important is that you light your green screen as evenly as possible. You want all the green around your subject or around yourself to be as evenly green. You don't want one side to be brighter than the other or having annoying shadows in there. You don't want that. So if it's for you avoidable, if you have a decent light setup, then make sure to bring your soft lights right in front of your green screen and blast it against the green screen without necessarily lighting your subject. That's the trick. Of course, if you have more lights available, then it's easier. If you just have one light source, like a big window, like right now I'm lit by a big window and it's very nice soft lighting, that can work too, as long as you don't have an annoying shadow right at the edge. And then a little tip for that too is, move yourself away from the green screen. Then it's less likely that you're gonna throw shadows on the green screen. Another great tip for you is, that might be a little obvious, but don't wear anything green. Worst case scenario, your green shirt looks just like the green screen. And then if you try to key it out, you just key out your entire body. And you obviously don't want that for most cases. So try to not wear anything green. If you have to wear something green, then it's probably easier to use a blue screen instead. That's why I always like to have the portable green screen because it has a blue side and a green side. But if your green clothes don't completely match the green screen, then it's still possible to key it out without removing your actual body. So just experiment with it because it's doable, but it's a little trickier. Another tricky one is if you have very messy hair or a big beard, like 
Akira doesn't really like to work with like transparency like that. So if you have crazy hair like this and you try to key this out, it could be tricky. It's, it, it could be quite difficult, but it's doable. If the lighting is proper, then it's definitely doable. Just be aware that it can be more difficult. So if you have the possibility to just calm your hair before or yeah, fix your beard, trying to make sure the beard, like I don't have a beard right now, but if your beard was, you know, right in front of the green screen, just try to keep that in mind because it's gonna make your life easier on the editing side. Okay, the next one is super tricky and important. I've made this mistake in my last project and all the pros were like, eh, it's not perfect and uh, I agree, I messed up on that one, but I'm still learning, so cut me some slack. Match your focal length of your real camera with your digital camera. So saying, if I shoot green screen footage on 50 mil focal length, you know, if you don't know about camera basics, check out this video because I made a whole camera basic video where I talk about all these things. But if you know what a focal length is, it's basically how far you zoom in. So if your focal length of your real camera is 50 millimeter, you want to match the digital camera, you know, in Blender or so, or After Effects, you want it also to be 50 millimeter. Otherwise, it just doesn't match right. It doesn't feel right, okay? So definitely keep that in mind. You can stretch it here and there. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time, especially when your subject is far away. But the moment your subject is very close, you want to match the camera focal length. And the next tip is very little tip, but I always try to do that. When you bring your green screen character into Blender, I always try to cover up the contact points. Wherever the feet are touching the ground, I always try to cover it with something, with leaves or maybe an object in the foreground, something where it covers that, because contact points are very, very tricky to make them look real in CG. Because the shadows are not gonna work proper 100%, you can get away with a lot, but if you can, just put something right in front of it and that's gonna help. But of course, it always depends on how detailed your shot is, how close you are to your subject. If it's very far away, don't even worry about that one. But if it's just from toe to head, cover up the contact point. Trust me, that's, that's a big one. The next one is if you bring your green screen character into Blender, for example, you want him to be in scale because it does give it away right away if you have a green screen character next to a car and you see ah, he's way too short or way, he's way too big. So the best way to do that, I use my little Michal, comment hashtag Michal if you're still watching. I always use him as a reference size. I just always have him in my scene because then I know exactly how tall a human is. With Michal, for example, I know he's a little taller than me, so whenever I bring myself into a blender scene, I just make myself a little shorter than him, and then I know it's perfect. So for you personally, just download yourself a human model where you know exactly this guy is to scale, then you can use him as a reference point. So the next one is probably the most obvious one, the one everybody else is always talking about, but it's also one of the most difficult things to do match the lighting of your green screen character with the CG lighting. And that's very tricky because you don't always have all the flexibility to shoot your green screen character with the perfect lighting to match it with your CG thing. But what I always recommend is build your CG scene first, set the lighting, then you know exactly where the light sources are coming from, what kind of light sources are you using and then you can match that with your real lights when you shoot your green screen character. You can match the color temperature, how harsh those lights are, how big those lights are. If you don't have all these lights I have right now or even more, then it's probably easier just shoot it the best way you can shoot it to have a clean green screen shot and then match the CG shot. But what you don't want to do is just have flat lighting from the front in your green screen shot and then have all kinds of cinematic lighting in 3D because there you don't need a budget. You can just put as many lights as you want and all the crazy colors. You can only get away with so much. So try to match it as good as possible. If the lighting is coming from the right on your green screen character, you also wanna put a light there in your CG scene. It makes sense, right? It just happens so fast that you get excited in 3D because you can do all these things suddenly and then you just uh, get carried away. So just keep that in mind because it does make a huge difference. 
And if you did that properly, then you have to match the colors in Blender. So I'm wearing like a gray shirt right now. If there's something gray in the CG scene, then I want it to be the same color. Just like with whites and blacks, you have to match it. You can do that in the compositor. I always like to adjust my actual material of my green screen character. By the way, if you want to bring a green screen video into your Blender scene, I use images as plants. It's a built-in plugin, you just have to activate it. That way you can bring your green screen character on the plane into Blender, which is amazing. Then you can adjust your material until all the colors match. And that works the same way like in Photoshop. You just use a curves node or a hue and saturation node and play around with all these things until your image matches. Sometimes it's better to work with a principal in BSDF or sometimes it's better to just use an emission node, play around with it, whatever works for you and for the particular project. If you use emission, it's not gonna take any lights from your environment, but then you have full control. If you use the principal BSTF, then, then it's gonna use lighting from your CG environment, so it's a little easier to get away with things, but you can't be as precise. Okay, the next tip is Basically a few tips about how to key your subject like in After Effects or Final Cut, wherever you want to do it, even in, inside of Blender you can do it. But technically the way I do it is in After Effects, I have my green screen video, then I duplicate it, and then I use the keyer on the upper layer, the lower layer is invisible, and then I can crank all the contrast and everything in the screen mat view because then I have only a black and white mask, so I can really crunch it without even worrying about what it's gonna do with the colors, because what I'm gonna do in the end is I'm gonna use the lower layer and be like, can you use the upper layer as a mask? Because then I have a perfect cutout. That way, even if I don't have a perfect green screen, like little shadows like you see right now, that doesn't even matter because I have a perfect cutout. And then on the upper layer, I can adjust the edges, soften them, shrink them a little, and uh, that always helps. And then on the lower layer, the upper layer is gonna be invisible at this point. It's just gonna use the mask information. And then on the lower layer, you just have to cut out a little uh, garbage mat so, so you don't have anything unnecessary in your shard because usually you don't need all of your shot you just need the surroundings around your subject and you can do that with just with the mask tool just just garbage mat and that way you get a clean chroma key effect okay the last tip is again super obvious but i have a hard time because i do things in the wrong order sometimes right so what you should do is like match your green screen character perfectly with your animation like this scene where I have the cars lifting up with uh, telekinesis, right? Uh, I, I believe that the cars were moving too early or too late, something like that. And just match the timing. You can do that in the video note where you can adjust which frame to start. So really take your time to pick that, preferably as early as possible, because I always make the mistake to do that last. And the problem with that is, at this point, the animation is so slow, I can barely watch it. I can see maybe half a frame per second. So it takes a long time until I actually see what's happening. So just do it early on before your scene is too big and too slow because eventually you just have to render it out. It's gonna take days or hours or weeks even sometimes. And um, then it's too late. You don't wanna do that more than once. So yeah. Last tip is match your green screen character to your animation as early as possible. So those are my 10 tips for your green screen scenes. Make sure, again, please like the video so more people can watch it and benefit from it. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram. I'm definitely willing to help because that's what I'm making those videos for, to support other creators to create their nonsense. So thank you so much for watching my nonsense. Make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video. Toodaloo!